Hello and welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. I'm going to be showing you now how to make your own mackerel lures. Now, they're called all sorts. Tinsels, flashes, I call them feathers. Just simply because in the olden days they used to make them out of feathers. Now all I use is a 40 pound mono, a very simple standard 2 hook. Now this is an old Kit Kat wrapper. You can use anything you want, it just needs to be shiny and silver on one side. I like red on the other side. I need a little bit of thread, some super glue, and uh, I'll show you double quick how to go through them now. Now, you can buy them, but I think it's an extra pat on the back when you can catch something on a lure that you've made yourself. And these lures catch anything. I've caught well, I've got upwards of 10 or 12 different species in a session on homemade feathers like this. Right, on one end, you want a double loop. Now, you can make these in as many as you want. You could make it like a one hook rig, you can make it two, make it, make it six. It's just all up to what you want. But the first one you want, go about a foot down from the end, get all the both pieces, and twist one of them between your fingers. And what you're going to make here is you're making a twisted boom. So as you spin it round in your fingers, eventually what will happen is if you push them together, it will spin round itself like that. Now you want to make this six to eight inches long. So just keep twisting and twisting until it is the length that you want, like that. Then loop it over the top, and now you're just going to make a blood loop. So pass it through one, two, three, four. Then put this end through the eye. Wet it all and fold tight. There you go. You have a standoff snowed like that. And all I would do is I would just carry it on. Go up another, just over a foot, twist it again, spinning it until you get the length that you want. There you go, that's about the same. Make a loop and twist the blood loop over. One, two, three, four. Now look, there's two now. Make as many as you want all the way up. And the beauty of these is, when you've got a loop like that on the end, all you need to do to thread your hook on is push it through the eye. Like that. Put your hook through the loop and pull it down and then if you want to disconnect it just push the loop through again slip the hook out and you're off and the beauty when it's a twisted boom like that is it helps it stand off proud right now I'm going to show you how I make the tinsel lower on the back first off you're going to take just a little bit of your silver wrapper doesn't need to be much at all. There, look. And then what you do is you start at one edge and you kind of fold it and then fold it back. And fold it and fold it back. You know, like when you were a kid at school and you used to make like a fan out of a piece of paper? Just like that. So, effectively, it's like that. And this back end isn't too important because you're going to be cutting that up in a bit anyway so I'll just cut it in that sort of fashion so there you are and this piece here is all folded up on itself 
You see, I've just nipped the hook into a vise just to hold it so I can show you for the video. I'm going to lay my tinsels down over the shank. This is just embroidery thread. You can use any colour you want. I've chosen orange. Red will do fine. You want to have a loop down the shank like that. Hold it in place, then take this end and whip it around the shank. Now you're going around the shank of the hook and you're going over the top of the plastic. So you, you're going over the loop of the line and you're going over the plastic. So eventually it will look like that look. Then you want to pass the end of it through that loop. You're effectively making a snell knot. Then if you can see by pulling this you will pull that loop out. They look like that. And that tightens the whole thing down. Then all I'll do here is I'll make a simple overhand knot to lock it in place. Snip it off. And you just put a little tiny dab of super glue just on there to hold it. And all that does is it just holds the thread from unraveling. And there you go. As soon as that's dry, it's ready to be. There's your lure. Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. I'm out here now just out in the Carrick Roads near Falmouth with my homemade feathers and I'm going to show you that they'll catch mackerel that's the plan anyway now we uh, showed you in the video how to make them and all I'm doing now is I've just come out into a deeper area of the roads and I'm going to try and catch some mackerel with them I don't know if you can see that I've actually got I think it's pilchards topping around it. Right. We're in nearly 100 feet of water, and that was 23 wines. So it shows me that 12 wines will get me middle depth. I've got a lure on here that was made for me. By a, uh, by a follower, by a subscriber. There you go, mate. See that it works. This is actually a homemade spinner made for me by a subscriber so thanks very much you know, it shows it works there's that much feed around that I might actually stick a little mackerel down because where there is mackerel there will be fish to eat mackerel I'm just experimenting with how best to fish this lure it casts really well and it does have quite a nice action in the water but I'm going to try like a sink and draw retrieve casting it out letting it sink all the way at the bottom and just a slow wind or retrieving high up in the water just to see which works best yeah look just a little log casts like a bullet so thanks for that mate. And there we go, just to show you that they work.
There's a mackerel caught on a homemade feather made from a Kit Kat wrapper. There's a treble shot. I don't think you need any more proof than that that they work. Something's had hold of this mackerel. Oh, look. Probably a bass. Just popped a big one off there on the surface. Now that we've got enough bait, we'll go out and we'll see if we can find a wreck. We'll put some bait on these and I'll show you some whiting and some pouting hopefully. Usually the better fish are at the bottom of the bottom of the shoal. They're usually deeper. You just have to be able to get through the little fish. Oh look! Managed to get a pilchard on him <laughs> and dropped it right in my tackle box. You'll notice that as I'm dropping down, I drop. 8 to 10 feet then stop it and bounce drop 8 to 10 feet stop it and bounce that way you search out all the way through the water column means I've still got my live bait out I've just picked a different drift over a little bit of over a little bit of like bumpy ground and I'm going to fish my homemade feathers but I'm just going to put like a little mackerel strip on them and I'm going to fish them tight on the bottom Now, actually, I'm going to have to up that weight. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to get right down to the bottom without picking any mackerel up. So the best thing about having a loop on, you just take the lead, take the lead strip off. And put a different one on. What I'm hoping to get here, if I can get past the mackerel, is pouting, whiting, maybe even some little pollock. You can even pick wrasse up like this. If you're on a piece of ground that holds them, you get haddock on baited feathers. And, uh, in summertime, it's a good method for catching gurnards. Catch, <laughs> you catch 20 different species on baited feathers, they're brilliant. Especially when you've got a good set hook like that, and a little bit of attraction on the silver. Yeah. Now we're currently drifting at about 0.5 knots, which isn't a lot at all. A couple of boats around me here. The ground on the bottom is mud and sand, so I could just leave it bumping along like that. That's all you're looking for. It's just for the rod tip to just, just gently sit there. My sounder won't actually show me the bottom because it's that dense with thick it's that dense and thick with little fish. It thinks that we're in 15 feet of water when we're actually we're in a more like 115 feet of water. Looks like a fish actually. There it is. Hey, what? Whiting. Species number three on homemade feathers. Treble shot of mackerel. Don't actually want these. <laughs> the hooked in the mouth, clean like that. And let them go. But if they're hooked in the side or or badly hooked in the gill. It won't go back.
right. That's one thing you need to be really careful of when you're, when you're fishing with braid like this. So when you get any slack, you can accidentally wrap around the tip of the rod like that. If that had, if that had been a good fish then, it can either snap your line or snap the rod tip. On the live bait, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for it either to hit and then hoop over or to just bend straight over, showing that a good fish has picked it up. I actually don't know if I've got this. It's only a really small pecking bite. Oh yeah. Oh. And what did I say? <laughs> I did say you could catch gurnards using this method. There's a lovely little grey gurnard. They are stunners, I do love gurnards. So there's species number four for the homemade feathers. There's four types of gurnards you can get round here. Greys, reds, tubs and streaked. No, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have caught all four. The greys are always the smallest. This size, I don't know if you can hear him grunting. This size up to a pound, pound and a half. Reds, you'll get them to two pound. Tubs, I've had one of six pound. And the street ones, street to the rarest. Yeah, usually like a pound, pound and a half. Here are a couple of photos of this little guy that's going back. Well, it took a while but I finally got what was pecking at me. It was um, giving like a little rattle and every now and again was giving a little bit of a little bit of a bite. So I dodged the boat in reverse to give it a little bit of slack so that it wasn't drifting away. It uh, seems to have worked. Doesn't feel big, but a fish is a fish. There it is. Pouting on homemade feathers. Perfect bait for a conga. Picked it up just on the back side of the wreck. Every now and again it gives like a bit of a heavy lunge. Oh, huh. would you believe it? Dogfish. I might have guessed. <laughs> Greedy so and so. There, I hope I showed you that uh, these very simple homemade feathers can be very effective. Catch a wide range of species on these, on these homemade tinsels. I mean, I think we caught, uh, caught six species there in just a short session, but you can catch upwards of 10, 12, even 15 different species on feathers like this. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a like. If, you, uh, if you've got any comments, please let me know. If you have any suggestions for future vids that you'd like to see, give me a message. Um, if you think your friends will enjoy the video, give it a share. In the meantime, have a good one.